everyone. Welcome back to Dr. Me First. I'm your colleague in medicine, coach in life, Dr. Freaking Aaron Wiseman. And today I am bringing you an audio badass spotlight. I am joined by fellow physician, Dr. Matea Rentia. She is a fellow Hoosier physician that I'm so excited to be talking to IRL in real life over Thanksgiving break. We talk about being authentic. We talk about getting out of victim versus villain mentality. And most of all, what I loved is talking about it's okay to want to make changes. All right, with enough said, let's get into today's conversation. Welcome to the podcast, my fellow physician friend and fellow badass, Matea Rentia. It's so great to have you here with me today. Thank you. I, I love your podcast. I love everything you do. And I'm I'm so honored to be on here and talk with you. Absolutely. I love when listeners become guests and that's exactly what you are. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell the people on podcasting world a little bit about yourself and how life is going for you. Yeah. So... So I am an internal medicine physician. I practice primary care in Indianapolis, Indiana, and I'm in the middle right now. I know I didn't know that you were in Indiana as well. That was super exciting to me years ago when I found that out. So I uh, practice primary care and I'm in the middle of a transition from going from a very big full primary care clinic to uh, to going over part-time to the VA. So that's something that I'll talk about a little bit more. But And then in addition, I do a little bit of weight loss coaching. And that's been something that for me, you know, my whole life I was overweight and then I lost a a good amount of weight here recently over the past few years, but that was kind of how I came into this coaching world of kind of figuring out different ways to help myself. Um, But in addition to that, I have a husband, I have a two-year-old, I have three stepkids and life is very busy. And kind of where I found your work was I noticed I was only a few years years out of residency, but I noticed this pace is not sustainable. And so I kept thinking it was a me problem. And I kept saying, okay, I just need to get more efficient. It's fine. Like I'll learn the EMR better. I will do this. I will do that. And then really kind of the breaking point came when I had my son two over two years ago. And I noticed this just won't work period. I'm doing my max. Like I'm, I'm efficiency to the max, but this is not the life I want. And So then where you came in, I was really looking for a way to, I don't know that balance is the right word because I was really at the place where I was like, I just need to like leave medicine entirely because this won't work with the like type of disposition that I have or kind of who I am, things like that. But then I, I kind of found your work and I realized, okay, there's a way that I can look at this differently and, um, kind of just start to think differently, I think was the biggest thing. Yeah, you were at the point that I like to call chuck it in the fuck it bucket. (laughs) And I find so many people who they do, they're like Google searching at 2 a.m. And they're like, oh, my God, like I found somebody else because I'll put some crazy thing on the Internet or somebody will read my bio or like read one of the podcast episodes. And yeah, because like that's a rock bottom eureka something's got to change or mom is going to lose her ever loving shit moment. And so I was there, I was there in 2014, like searching, searching, searching. And I couldn't find, you know, I was looking at all these people were talking about at that point, like going to pharma or like making some kind of like medical equipment patents. I was like, I don't want none of that. (laughs) Where do I like, where do us moms, like you said, we eat efficiency for breakfast. So the point of like being more resilient, being more efficient, um, streamlining things, outsourcing to the extreme, it's like those are surface level problems. And so I know my journey. So we're going to like back and forth for everybody who doesn't know, we're going to talk about what it's like to be an authentic, real badass. And I was mentioning before we got on the recording to Matea that I feel like 
there's a lot of quote unquote celeb docs or a lot of like entrepreneur docs out there who like show up on the internet with the perfect ass and their yoga pants. Their seven kids are like in matching clothes and like very behaved. You know, they've had time to like get a weekly pedicure and manicure. And I'm over here like picking popped cart crumbs off of my collar and just hoping I have clean underwear on. And so I would just wanted to be really real. And Matea's like, yeah, she raised her hand. She was like, yeah, me too. We need to talk about this. This is why I got out there and started to like talk about my own things out there because I felt like there were so many perfect people where, you know, the weight's perfect and this, that, whatever. And I was like, I'm not even trying to help people get to a perfect weight. Like I just want them to feel comfortable and no one's ever being real out there. So we all end up feeling bad 24 seven on our own. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And as a very type A perfectionist group, for me, it's constantly reminding there is no perfect. There is no perfect weight. There is no perfect family. There is no perfect job. There is no perfect day. And and constantly reminding myself, like, that is no longer the goal, I think is huge for me. And I love what you're doing in the weight space to just be like, can we just fucking love ourselves? Can we just, like, love the body that we're in? And can we praise it for the things that it does? Like, the digestion it does every single day and the thousands of heartbeats that it puts through our head and our brains who do amazing work. And even though it doesn't fit into a size zero pants, like, oh, well, that's why they make all different sizes and it's okay. Yeah. You, you did an episode back in the day about kind of like breaking the rules or I forget what you called it, but you're sending along the lines of like, is this true? And you know, that you have to kind of give every last breath to the patient and all these kind of things. And I, I forget if it was nine or 11 that you had on there. And I remember reading through them being like, oh, I do every single one of these. <laughs> and I needed someone to point out that that wasn't the goal to sit there and give my last energy to someone else. If it's not sustainable or it won't help me long-term type of thing. You know, the big point that really helps cement that in, because I mean, I was right there too, like doing notes at midnight, following up on results popping in after hours, you know, patients would call and instead of telling them, no, we'll address it in the morning. I was like calling a pharmacist trying to figure out meds and bullshit. And what really cemented that in was when I was struggling, when I was at the bottom of the barrel of burnout and I finally started to open up. Those people who were physically located where I was didn't show up for me, you know? And it was, it was online community. It was women physicians who I had never even met in real life, but had somehow either had them on the podcast or had had a conversation with them or saw them put a post up and, you know, had DM them and was like, hashtag me too, like raising my hand. It was those people who... I mean, they just, those were the ones who showed up for me and who started to text me and like, hey, how are you doing? You know, and started to have friendships. And, you know, really that was what inspired me to make the badass group um, to talk about that. So talk a little bit about how, like, because you're, you've come into the community in the last couple of years, um, you mentioned you'd found me online and, you know, found the podcast and that sort of thing. But what has it been like for you jumping into these type of spaces? Was it was it as much of a salvation like it was for me? Yeah. So this so so I joined. Gosh, it was a few months ago that I joined your like official group program. But it's been doing things like this, being in your program where I realized that I'm not alone. I get to just hear other people's stories in a really unpressured way. And, and another thing I want to say, because I think this is a thing that a lot of us doctors have, like, we don't want stuff recorded. We don't want, we somehow like, we want it to have a safe space. Do you know what I mean? I, I hear this all the time from people and it's so nice that, you know, we meet, you get to talk about stuff, but it's not blasted everywhere. No admins coming after you. <laughs> like it's, I don't a, record them. I yeah, mean, that's been a that policy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that because it's, It's like, I don't, you know, I want to be able to talk freely. And I feel sometimes as physicians, we might say a comment that we know, I don't know if it's that we're venting or we're saying a perspective, but we know we would maybe not ever like write that down somewhere, if that makes sense. And just being able to be in the room and hear that, oh, look, everyone goes through the same scenario. I'm totally not alone. This is what everyone in the room is saying. (laughs) That to me is where 99% of getting a lot of the relief that I've gotten and realizing that there are different ways, hearing different things I could try. 
that's been the power of being in the room with, with in your program. I appreciate that. And, and I'm glad I'm getting that through because I think it's, I, I really do this work, not from a place of like, I want to be rich. I want to be famous, but really from the place of like, I don't want another person to ever feel as lonely as I did down here in Southern Indiana, struggling with physician burnout fucking figuring it out (laughs) on her own piecing shit together like i'm like don't do it the hard way anymore and so let's talk about that because i know you're kind of in the middle of a transition and that's a lot of what i help people to do is you know say screw bloom where you're planted because you've tried that and it hasn't changed anything it's time to get a new fucking garden so so talk about like what did you have to do you were ready to just like throw it all away so two, people come to me in two ways. Either they're like done, but they're scared to death and they make no traction or they're done and they're like ready to blaze earth and like burn the motherfucker all the way to the ground. What did you have to do to like slow down through your training? Cause you were definitely burnt, like scorched earth. So, okay. So I realized this will not work for the rest of my life. I cannot, some of the scenarios in which we are, you are seeing patients at a very rapid pace the uh, panel expectations are very high, you know, and again, everyone's in a different scenario, but that was some of what I was dealing with. And so I realized once I started to realize it's not an efficiency problem and it's not like I, it's not something that I need to get better at, if that makes sense. What I realized is there's no victim villain. These systems work great for someone else. I have colleagues that thrive in this environment. They are doing amazing. And so I realized like, it's not admin, it's no one else. It's this doesn't work for me long-term. And so I tried all these things, by the way, like I tried to cut down the hours and I tried this and I tried that, but then I realized the structure doesn't work for me, but I had to get really neutral about realizing like nothing bad is happening here. It's just, this won't support me long-term. And then once I got there, I had to, the, the the part two was I had to break down a lot of my self-imposed pain, if that makes sense. Like, like me being on answering messages all day long at night and weekends and things like that. And I had to start to realize this is not truth or this doesn't need to happen. I have options here. So realizing I had more autonomy than I realized. I think that's a big thing. And there, there was some uncomfortableness with that because you do see patients later and then they say, well, I, I heard you're not in on Fridays and you know, they, it's like constantly like thrown back in your face and you have to realize like, yeah, I, I definitely check my inbox once a day and I get back to you definitely as quickly as I can, but it's, it's, you have to get on board with yourself having made some different decisions, if that makes sense. And so I think a lot of like listening to your podcast and being in your program helped me with, it's okay that I even want to make these changes. It's okay that I want to be there for my family. It's okay that I'm multi-passionate and I have other things I want to achieve as well. To also realize I'm not only medicine, that I realized a lot of these skills are actually transferable and I'm using them in other ways that I love and I can do both. I don't have to just do one 100% and throw away all of who I am. So I don't know, did that even answer the question? That totally did. I was like writing all of that list down because you're so right. It's like figuring out that it's okay to be different. I mean, I read all of these amazing books to my children about, because we're in a very rural area. And I mean, just as a family, we are different than a lot of other families around here. But it's like, again, learning that lesson to be like, maybe you're a rainbow fish in a sea of gray fish. And that's okay. Like, you need to go find the tropical waters. I always talk about it like round peg square hole. No matter how hard I pushed, I was still a round peg trying to fit in a square hole. But it's like switching your brain around to being like, but there are, are no round holes. There are no round holes. This is the only thing. It's in front of me. This is what it is. And withdrawing and recognizing my fit is somewhere. Now, is it going to be like right in front of me in a Cinderella moment? No, absolutely not. It's going to be hard work. But sister friend, you do hard. You can do hard. And so you just really have to choose your hard. It's either the hard of staying and staying in a situation that doesn't fit you, your values, what's most important to you and how you thrive, or it's the hard of like making a shift and people not understanding family not understanding, patients not understanding, colleagues not understanding. But then eventually you're like in our spot a couple years later. 
I'm back in primary care and I am loving it. I got second year medical student love and I'm like, yes, all, I'm not going to say all the hard work was worth it because some of it was not. It was, it's, it's hard, very hard. It's just like med school. Like when people ask, would you do it again? And everybody pauses like, oh, I don't know. Same thing for going through a job and career transition, but it doesn't matter because if you're living in the now and you find that fit and you have like that flow and that tingly second year medical student love again, when you go take a sebaceous cyst off somebody's head, like it's worth it. <laughs> In the moment, it's worth it. Now, is it going to be like that tomorrow? I don't know. And that's the place that I've really had to learn is like, it's good for now. And if it ever turns not good, that's okay. Like, we can change. We can pivot again. Do I want to do that? Absolutely not. But I could if I needed to. Right. I like how you just said you choose your hard and then you basically, you said you have options. Right. And I think that's the thing though. Like I, I love this quote, you know, two friends are talking and one says to the other, why are you picking the hard path? And that friend says, why do you think I see two paths? And I think that's where we are. Like in the beginning of this work is that we don't even know that there's options. We just think we have to stay where we're at or, or that nothing can ever get better. And that's really not true. And it's just as hard to stay unhappy in that as it is to find something else and make some changes. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I really liked going back to your point because I was taking notes off you because I'm like, ooh, I got to use this stuff. But recognizing your autonomy, there is learn victimhood in medicine. Let's just be honest. And I find it creeping up in me all the time. Like the system is broken. We can't do anything because administrators and Medicare. And like you said, really like recognizing when we are giving away our autonomy and instead just saying, like, I love the story of the the starfish, of the little boy who's walking along the beach, and there's a million, like, beach starfish, and he picks one up and throws it in, and a man stops him. He's like, what are you doing? You can't help all of them. And he's like, but I could help this one. And for me, that's what gets me out of victim mentality is, like, I helped that one today, or I helped those nine people today, or I mentored a nurse practitioner or a medical student today. Like, I helped that one but when I think when you're in the middle of burnout, like you just see all the black and it all feels so heavy because I've talked about this before on the podcast, like gratitude journaling is difficult for me. I'm going to be very honest because I do. I see big picture and I see all the problems and all the things, but it really is like coming back to like the one starfish. If you can find the one starfish today that you helped and you answered a my chart message like that might be your only damn starfish, but you got it done. That's right. what helps keep me out of that like victim villain. Because when you're living in victim villain mode, you're living in survival mode. I mean, let's just be honest. It's like eat or be eaten. So and true. like if if that's where you're maintaining and your sympathetics, that's not fun. It's not fun at all. And the thing is, it's not just at work, like it, it carries into your evenings, your weekends. So you're never really turning off, right? Because you're like constantly living in that. Well, don't you think uh, so personally, speaking from my experience, when it was bad at work and when it sometimes starts to head back in that way, because, you know, I've been talking a lot about burnout relapse, that victim villain comes home with me. And yeah. you better believe people I live with start to you know, start looking like villains. I'm like, I don't want my closest people to, to be villains, but I feel that programming at times. And that's when I have to remind myself, this is the mantra that I say, Craig is my friend. Craig is my friend. Craig is my friend. I have to remind myself that my husband is my friend and he is not trying to make my life harder, but that's just like hashtag real talk. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I find that the if I'm not taking good care of myself, my bandwidth is like zero. If the kids do anything, it's like, that's it. It's over. <laughs> There's no more to give. No, absolutely. If you don't, if you don't have that open capacity, you are running on a tight margin, if any margin at all. And like you, you, you can't have things get messed up during the day. You can't burn the bacon on the stove because then you have no more bacon. And what are you going to feed the kid? Like, so it's, it is, it's like really working on increasing that bandwidth and that's either taking things off your plate, like removing it. So it opens up your bandwidth or that's getting healthier so that your bandwidth can grow. And I know I wanted my grant bandwidth to grow exponentially. And it's been really interesting as I've been 
doing this work, you know, it's been seven years. So my body has changed too. And just recognizing those bandwidth changes in our physical health, that we're not just robots that we can just pick up and run 14 miles whenever we want to, but that like things hurt now. And like a leave is one of my best friends at times is also important to recognize. And I think that's where self-compassion and community really comes in. One, if because if I can't be compassionate to myself, how can I be compassionate to the people around me and not villainize them? Completely. That is, it's funny, you know, we're, we're talking about burnout, but I always think about weight loss because it's always what I'm doing. And it's the same compassion thing. So people beating themselves up if they overeat or, or with burnout, you're, bur- you're beating yourself up because you feel exhausted all the time. It's, how's that helping? You know, but I think it's for so long on both arenas for me, both for weight loss and for work. If I just pushed harder, I got the results I wanted until like that hammer doesn't work anymore. It just becomes destructive. There's no more nails. Then you're just putting holes in things. Right. And so it is, it is hard to change that when it has been so effective in the past on, for me, both of those fronts. And so it's been really interesting. And I'll just go back to, I think the ingredient that really makes this and makes this stick is getting out of isolation and really finding those safe spaces. And I don't care if it's with me or somebody else or a different podcast. Like that's my biggest thing to tell people is like, you are not alone. You can find those spaces for you. Yeah. I think it's really healing too. When you get in the room with other people that you feel understood, you finally feel like you have uh, found your community. Yeah. Find your tribe, love them hard. Absolutely. Well, friend, it's been so great talking with you. If people want to connect with you, where are the best places to hang out? Yeah. One of the best places is um, on Instagram. So I'm Matea Rentia MD. That's M-A-T-T-H-E-A-R-E-N-T-E-A-M-D. And that's the best place. You can literally message me on there and you can find everything from there. I love Insta. That's where like the real me hangs out too. So, well, friend, thank you so much for coming on the podcast. And I just have to tell you the badass in me honors the badass in you. Thank you. It's great to be on. Hey, all you aspiring podcasters out there, listen up. If you have always wanted to start a podcast, but you haven't gotten around to it yet, this is your sign. I have made a podcasting 101 and podcasting 202 presentation that I want to help you. For a limited time only this fall, you can pick up both of those in a bundle. Check the show notes for the link. In podcasting 101, you get everything you need to get your podcast off the ground with fun and ease. And in podcasting 202, you learn how to scale and monetize so that you can grow your podcast reach and even make some dollars. When I started podcasting in 2018 here on Dr. Me First, I had no idea what I was getting myself into or how much I would love doing this podcast. So having a course like this to show me a way would have saved me so much pain and hassle from everything that I went through. And I shared that with you so you can get started on the right path. Plus, you get to see the Aaron Wiseman way of things. Let me show you the Coupon Mom easy way to podcast. This won't be around forever, so go check it out and get your podcast out there. Then make sure to email me and let me know when it's launched. I want to listen to you too. But you got to go check out Podcasting 101 and Podcasting 202 to get you started. Dr. Rentia for coming on the podcast with me. It was just so enjoyable to sit down and hang out with you while I was making my children clean up the house (laughs) over break time. One extra little bit I want to talk about as we wrap up the podcast today is those two questions. Instead of asking ourselves what's possible, because we've absolutely been doing that for years, reaching for the stars, shooting for the moon, going for the big, big goals, asking what's possible, and then crushing our goals. I really do think it's time to shift perspective and start asking, what do I really want? Knowing that all things are possible and that, yeah, we can totally crush those goals, but also knowing that 
it's okay just to go out and lay in the grass and look at the stars and not always have to be shooting for those. So I want to ask you that. Instead of saying, you know, that you could do all these great, amazing, terrific things, what is it that you really want to do with your life, with your career, with your family, with the energy that you have and the health that you have at this point, with all the things? What is it that you want? because it's absolutely okay to change and go after those things. Okay, friends, thanks for joining me. I hope that you have a very happy holiday season. Reach out if you need anything. And remember, your life, your calling, your pulse matters. <music>